everybody, how's it going? Welcome to SMG Viewers Comments, episode number 304. Four. I just want to take a second here and welcome everybody who's been subscribing to the show as of late. I'm absolutely blown away by the response I've been getting on my Monday morning videos. It's been absolutely fantastic. So I want to make more of them. And this Monday, we're going to be having tentatively called anyway, 15 things to avoid when recording your guitar at home. I've got a whole list of them. If you guys have some suggestions for things to avoid when recording your guitar, hey, I want to hear from you. Leave them in the comments below. Maybe they'll wind up on Monday's show. We'll see. Anyway, you guys got comments, you got questions, I'd want to hear from you as well. Let's get right to it, shall we? Any remarks on the David Ellison thing going on? I imagine you might have some bass player jokes. Well, Michael, you certainly picked a hell of a topic to start this episode off with. Uh, for those of you who aren't aware, there's been a bit of an online scandal with David Ellison and somebody younger than him from the opposite sex. And I'm going to leave it there. Here's the thing. Ellison is a Lutheran minister, and I thought I'd handle this question by doing something very, very unchristian. And that is, I'm not going to pass judgment. I've met the man, he's been on the show, and he was kind enough to share my interview video with Paul Wadi, uh, where I talked to Paul about mixing the Megadeth Peace Cells record, which was one of my absolute favorite records of all time. Fantastic. And I really appreciate Dave's sharing that, that video. That was great. He's a good dude as far as I'm concerned, and what he does in his own time and his private life is his own business. The only lesson to be learned here is, please, for the love of Krom, Nobody wants to see what you're doing to yourself, or somebody else for that matter. Lens caps exist for a reason. Ultimately though, I really feel bad for the girl who was involved because now she's had to publicly admit to having sex with a geriatric bass player. Yeah. One of my coworkers keeps telling me that if I want to make music seriously, I need to ditch my focus right and switch out Reaper for something over $160. Forget what Dahi actually told me to buy, LMAO. His reason, according to him, you can't edit or download plugins on Reaper. And when I corrected him, he just said, well, I like to buy nicer, more expensive things. That being said, if better gear makes you better at music, why are we both working in a shitty hardware store? That's because better gear is not going to make you a better musician or a better songwriter. That's complete fucking bullshit. Just get over that. Look, I'm not saying it isn't nice to have nice gear. Believe me, I've got tons of nice gear here. And this is the thing, though. I've been at this since 1998, and I've built my collection up over the years. This sort of thing just takes time. Now, I've got no problem with him wanting to buy better gear. I mean, working hard and buying a nice piece of equipment, it definitely gives you a certain sense of achievement. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. Oh, I worked my ass off for this. I'm going to buy something really cool. I mean, like I did the exact same thing when I was 18 and I bought my 29 fret Washburn way back in 1989, which I've still got. I did a show on it there a couple months back. An absolutely great guitar, and it certainly didn't make me a better guitar player, not for an iota. I did practice the hell out of it, though. You know, Adam Neely asked this question a few years ago at the very first TGU, is better gear going to make you a better musician? And my answer didn't make it into the final edit because I think I was fucking with his narrative a little bit. And I said, great gear isn't going to make you better, but it might increase your workflow. And in this situation, that's why I've got a lot of great gear. You can certainly get similar results with cheaper gear, but better gear might get you to your goal faster, especially say in a mixed type situation, that sort of thing. But there is no shortage of awesomely amazing cheap gear out there. Like the new Harley Benton Amrock guitars are absolutely fantastic for the money. They're under 500 bucks and they sound absolutely phenomenal. I've got this made in Mexico Fender Jazz is wound up on a ton of records. I picked it up for 200 bucks on the used market. Sounds absolutely ferocious. And believe me, there's nothing wrong with your Focusrite hardware or working with Reaper. I've heard guys get absolutely phenomenal results with Reaper. Bob Lentini, the creator of Saw Studio, made absolutely amazing recordings with nothing more than a Behringer ADA 8000. It's a $200 eight channel mic preamp and converter. That's all he needed. Roger Nichols, one of the arguably best recording engineers that, that ever lived, he did all the Steely Dan records. He said this the best. He said, you guys worry way too much about gear. Give me a couple of SM57s and I'll knock your socks off. I thought that was an absolutely fantastic thing. My skills aren't quite there yet, but it's definitely something to strive for. You can certainly do some amazing recordings with nothing more than a couple of 57s, some Focusrite gear and Reaper. Don't let anybody tell you otherwise. And as for your friend who said you can't download plugins in a Reaper, I mean, come on, seriously, that kind of statement should tell you right there that he's just talking out of his ass. 
Okay, guys, I'm doing a limited run sale on this shirt. Life is not a preset. This came out of a viewer's comments episode a couple weeks back where I, I said that at the end of, end of uh, somebody's question. Somebody said, you need to put that on the shirt. Well, here you go. We got it on this super comfortable long sleeve. We'll also have it on a t-shirt and a tank top as well. Plus, got it on a coffee mug with a super cool SMG logo on the back. Life's not a preset. And... This is new, we've got a thermos cup and this thing's absolutely great. It's got this really, really cool gasket lid on it so you won't leak your coffee all over the place. I've driven around with a coffee hot in here for about an hour. This thing's absolutely fantastic. I wanna get like six more of these, I really like these. Anyway, you can get the shirt, you can get the mug, all that cool stuff. It's only gonna be available till end of evening, Sunday night, midnight Pacific, and then it is gone. So grab it while you can. Anyway, time for the butt hurt of the week. Dude, your thing is metal where vocals mean jack shit. Your opinion is meaningless. A simple windscreen often does far more than aftermarket pop filters. Levels, levels, levels are the only thing that matters in recording vocals. Don't hide plosives. Natural speech and singing contains plosives. Might as well record a robot vocals. Color from the mic lives works for the sound you want. Not coming to the mic records the fall of the recording engine. I've heard your recordings live. No one would pay to see those bands live. That's the thing. Any recording that has to walk the line between live and can. If it sounds live, it's all better. If it sounds can, there's no way to replicate live. There you have it, guys. Robert King and his infinite wisdom on recording vocals. Take the pop filter off. Wow, that is the smartest thing I've ever fucking heard. Yes, you know what, Robert? You're right, absolutely. Take the pop filter off. Leave those plosives in, because they sound fucking amazing. Good advice, I guess, but I would have preferred some explanation of some things rather than the abuse of shouting. Well, empathetic listener, this is a metal channel! Nobody gives a shit about your empathetic listening! Nobody cares about your feelings! Here's an idea, fucking grow a pair! I'm more than happy to give advice, but expect some shouting because people keep making the same fucking stupid mistakes over and over again! Get it? Okay. Once again, this is a metal channel. You want to be empathetic, go back to your Celine Dion records. Hey Glenn, what's your take on amps with XLR outputs for silent recording? Also, would it be possible to blend multiple amps with the XLR output through something like a Behringer mixer and then into an interface and DAW with Lancaster IRs? Well, I've got the Rev Mark III up there and that's got a direct out. It's got a two notes torpedo built right into it. It's absolutely fantastic. I've been using it a lot the last couple weeks. That's gonna be for a project coming out in the near future. I know you guys are gonna be really interested in. I've got the T Torpedo Captor X here for silent recording. Other amps, you know, I got the Rev G20, which has got an output on it. I got a Houston Kettner with a red box on it. Yeah, I think it's absolutely fantastic, especially if you can't crank up if you're in an apartment type situation. I definitely like a hybrid setup where it's a tube head and then a digital back end rather than a digital front end and a mic'd up cabinet. Although I don't think too many people are doing it like that. Although I gotta say the Quad Cortex through that Seymour Duncan power amp and into the Zilla cab, I, that video I did a few weeks back, that did actually sound pretty damn good as well. You could blend multiple amps uh, into like a Behringer mixer or something like that doing it as well. But honestly, for something like that, I'd say probably do it in your DAW. Uh, to start with anyway. I wouldn't worry too much about getting a blend between mics. Like I said, it's possible, but you might run into phase issues like that as well. And that can be a real nightmare. You'd be better off to record it into your DAW and then grab something like Sound Radix Auto Align to make sure everything's in absolute perfect phase before you start mixing stuff. Otherwise, you're gonna run into all sorts of problems. Glenn, when you record drums, how high low do you set your mic gain on your interface? Oh man, that is the bane of digital recording is live drums because you can just never seem to get the mic preamps quiet enough. That's the real problem too. I think a lot of guys had problems recording drums into digital at the early onset because the signals are so hot, you have to crank your preamps down and you're not getting any of the flavor that they impart when you start loading up the transformers and start cranking things up. A lot of preamps need output faders. Like I've got some API 512Cs, which are great, but they're so fucking loud, I can never turn them up so they saturate. I've actually got a little fader board to put after it to, uh, to turn down the outputs a little bit so I can crank the preamp up a little bit more. But if you're going directly into an interface, you're going to want to make sure it's got some kind of inline pad for about 20 dBs. I mean, like Earthworks, they make those amazing condenser drum mics, the little guys, I've had them on the show numerous times. They make some inline pads as well, which are absolutely a total necessity. Otherwise, you're just not going to be get your preamps working at the correct level. So it is something to look at. Um, Inline pads you can get anywhere, like Sweetwater, Toman, that sort of thing. Definitely worth having a look for. 
You miss the irony that if every home recording musician knew what they were doing, there would be no need for you and you would be out of work. The master never teaches the apprentice all the tricks unless they want to be obsolete. Still keep up with the good advice. Oh, I'm more than happy to pass along what I know. I've been doing it since 2005 on the Andy Sneap Forum when I did that thread, how to record heavy drums at home. I gave it all away and I'm, I'm proud to give it all away because it still takes time to develop your skills and your ear and really master the craft. This isn't something where you can learn painting overnight because you sat through a couple of art classes and the teacher taught you everything he knew. It takes time to develop your skill and I'm more than happy to do that. So make sure you watch Monday and hopefully I'm gonna get to teach you guys something cool about recording guitar. We'll see. Hey, older bass strings does sound warm and I'd be pissed if someone changed my bass strings without asking me and then charging me for it. Sincerely, bassist. Well, your first mistake was thinking your opinion means something. I just listened to old mixes from when I started two years ago and guess what? I hated them. Oh, what a wonder, right? Your videos and types helped me so much I can clearly hear my evolution. Thank you so much for uploading such good stuff. You're very welcome. As I stated a couple of questions ago, I'm more than happy to pass on what I've learned. The trick is you just gotta keep working on your craft. Believe me, I put on mixes I, I did two years ago and I can't stand them. That's just the thing. We learn, we get better, we evolve. Nobody's perfect, nobody's an expert to start out with. We all keep learning, myself included. I try and learn something new about recording every single day. That's how we get better. If you're not cringing about stuff you did two years ago, you're doing something wrong. Glenn, can you please do a video about best ways to record drums on eight channels at Interface? Also, the fuck no tips, ha ha ha, fuck you, keep up the good content. Hey Sebastian, thanks so much for writing that. Uh, I'll tell you what, I reached out to my friends at Focusrite and we're gonna see if that video can happen. Recording drums with an eight channel interface. Hopefully you can take a look at one of the new Scarlets. If you guys want to see that video happen, leave a comment below because I can send some screenshots over to my friend Dan at Focusrite and say, hey, let's get this in gear, shall we? As, as for the tutorial videos, once again, make sure you're there Monday morning for the guitar video. I think you're going to like what I've got to say. Your sister's birthday party, LOL. Now, I can't take credit for that line. That was my old college prof, Vladimir Kablik, affectionately known as Vlad the Impaler. He's also a Canadian filmmaker. I learned a lot from this dude. And that was his quote every time you had to pull in some rinky dink piece of gear to be like, well, that might be good for your sister's birthday party, but we are trying to work at a professional level. And, uh, you know, just he'd always chew you out with that sort of shit all the time. It'd be like, it was a tough pill to swallow sometimes, but it's definitely what we needed to hear as students. And again, he didn't sugarcoat things. He'd be like, that was his way of saying, that's a piece of shit, get rid of it, get something better, get something wor worth working with. And once again, I, I go back to the first question here. There is some amazing cheap gear out there. There's some absolute gems there, but sometimes you gotta bite the bullet and lay down the money for something good and reliable. And that's gonna let you do the job quicker. It's all about finding a balance between the two, and that is what this show is for, to help you guys find that balance. Thanks for the video, Glenn. I had the pop filter at home for my studio mic, but I'm wondering if the old-fashioned foam cover would also do the trick. Well, Eddie, that's a fantastic question, and according to Robert King, you're doing it wrong! You shouldn't use a pop filter! No, seriously, pop filters are great. Um, foam works as well. I mean, like, you guys have seen me do, I don't know how many tutorial videos with this thing. This is my SM7B, and it comes with two different types of foam. I use the bigger foam because it uh, filters the plosives out of my voice that much more, and I think it sounds absolutely fantastic. You can totally get away with a foam filter, but you might lose a bit of your top end as well. The trick is to experiment. Find out what works the best for your voice. This works great for my voice, but it might not be the solution for everybody. Everybody's different. Try a few different ideas out, see how it works for you. I know that you're redoing these lists for new subscribers, but the truth be told, I think you're single-handedly eliminated mic cupping and home recordings for the last decade or so with your tutorial videos. Keep it up and keep happy, Glenn. Hey, thanks so much for that. And this is the thing I learned like three weeks ago is like, I've got all sorts of tutorials about recording, how to record heavy guitar, how to record heavy drums, and YouTube doesn't push to those. So a lot of new people coming in haven't seen those videos. I've got playlists and a lot of people don't click them either. So apparently I'm gonna have to do some new tutorial style videos. I think I'm gonna do a new version of how to record drums. It's probably gonna be how to record heavy drums in 2021 or something like that, where we do like a five or six part series on recording and we might even look at some sample blends, that kind of stuff, just to kind of expand the palette and, and not be quite such a fanatic against drum samples. As I'm learning, you know, kicking and screaming all the way, that uh, even some of my favorite records had some sample blends in there. So it turns out I've been recording drums in hard mode for quite a while. 
Anyway, it's going to be an interesting series. Probably do a new series on uh, recording guitar as well. Should be a lot of fun. Hope you guys are there for it. Like I said, I'll probably be putting those out on Monday mornings, so keep your eyes peeled for that. Glenn! Or anyone else in the comment section. I use an Audion ID44 interface and want to get some compression on my vocals on the way in. Looking at the Art Pro VLA 2, but I would need an additional mic pre with that, right? Could you recommend anything budget-friendly? Greetings from Berlin, Thomas. Yeah, that's the real trick, isn't it? It's like, I like to compress on the way in. I mean, I got my distressor happening back here. See, I can yell really loud and it stops down on the peak so I don't put my signal into the reds. It's a fantastic way to work. I'm going through a Neve 1073 OPX into a distressor. It's a killer vocal chain. You're not gonna find much better, to be honest with you. But as for a budget mic for, I'd really recommend getting into the 500 series stuff. Uh, the best bang for the buck and absolutely sounds totally magnificent is the Cranbourne Camden series, 500 series mic pre. It's absolutely stellar. It's got the mojo knob, totally killer stuff. I might be looking at some of the cheaper Midas power supplies for that just to see if there's a budget option. But I mean, as for an actual single channel mic pre that'll sit in a 19 inch rack, I'm kind of stumped on that one. If someone's got some suggestions, I'm all ears. Feel free to share with the class. Glenn, thanks for your blend of information, sarcasm, and humor. It's still the best on the web, but your sheer honesty is what made me a subscriber. We all make mistakes, but you may enough to show us that it's not the end of the world when that happens. Just try to learn from it and improve. Hats off to you for adulting so well. Remember, for every one person that complains about something, there's a thousand satisfied subscribers like me. Take care and fuck you, Glenn. Hey, Scott, fuck you too. I really do appreciate that though. And that's the thing I've done on this show. You know, there have been some missteps along the way. Sometimes I get it wrong, but I'm the first guy to say, hey, you know what? I fucked up. This is where the mistake was made and th this is how I improved it. And that, my friends, is how we learn. By making mistakes, identifying the problem and correcting them. The worst thing I could do as a YouTube host is to fuck something up and then deny it. Cause so many people do that and it's just such fucking bullshit. Ownership of the problem is what makes us better at what we do. And that's how we evolve. All right, that's it for this week. Thanks so much for watching. I really do appreciate, once again, everybody who's been hitting the subscribe button. You guys have been absolutely fucking amazing. And once again, life is not a preset. It's only going to be available till Sunday night. So grab it while you can. We've got it on the amazing thermos mug with the super cool SMG logo on the back. We've got a lot of coffee mug. We got t-shirts, we got tank tops, we got long sleeves, and it's all going away Sunday night. Get it while you can. Anyway, I'll see you guys Monday morning. Thanks again for watching. And don't forget, if you know an anti-vaxxer, have them spayed or neutered today.